I grew up in Plymouth, Minnesota, an affluent suburb about 20 miles west of Minneapolis and home to the biggest public school district in the state, Wyzetta, where I went to school. It's a large town peppered with largely identical neighborhoods and containing little for a kid without their driver's license to do aside from school, sports, and an endless list of resume-beefing extracurriculars, all of which I just about lost interest in by the time I got to high school. What I did have there was music. I considered myself full-time punk, being the patron music of the listless and suburban by the age of 14, even if I didn't have an ounce of gel in my hair or a safety pin on any of my clothes to show for it. Making fucked up music was just about the only thing I thought about, even as I became aware of what some might consider the silly idealism and misplaced energy of it all. Reaching the highest volumes possible in basements and garages was what I lived for, even as the thought of playing to an audience was still only a distant dream. Then, a week before the last day of school in ninth grade, one of my friends joked that we should put on a concert as a party on the last day of school. The joke quickly stopped being one as we wondered if it was actually something we could pull off, and like that, we just started neglecting our schoolwork for the last week and making a poster for the imaginary event, hoping it would become real. We called the event Shadunga Blowout, in reference to our fake record label that was conceived sometime in 8th grade. The pool of about 10 band members we had were rearranged in every possible permutation and given new band names in an attempt to make our concert look real. We convinced our friend Sam's parents to let us clear their pole, pole barn full of tractors and equipment to use for a stage. The night of the concert, we just about thought no one was going to show up. As we sat around laughing at our botched effort, musicians we didn't even know who had heard about the show started showing up with their own equipment in hopes of getting a set. They would end up becoming some of my closest friends in high school. And then an audience materialized. By some strange DIY miracle, around 400 kids showed up throughout the night. The bands were sloppy, the floor was inhospitably sweaty, and the crowd spontaneously burst into mosh pits. My ears rang for a day after the last notes were strummed, but I remember the distinct, glowing impression at the end of the night that it had been one of the best nights of my life. The interactions between audience members that night were the kind of thing that I would have rolled my eyes at had it been in a movie. Kids from vastly different backgrounds who never talked to each other during the school year madly danced with each other, and upperclassmen that had until then seemed so much older than us expressed a disbelief at what we had pulled off. The truth was, it had all just fallen together. I remember feeling at the time like we were playing concert organizer, tricking kids into seeing a fake show with fake bands, but I've learned since that doing things myself has never really stopped feeling like a con. Knowing that a bunch of 15 year olds with no money and no plan could bring a bunch of people together has stuck with me like no other experience in my life, and thinking about it makes me hopeful that I can use my energies to create spaces with other young people where differences can be respected and transcended. I also realized that night that that's exactly what I want to do with my life.